I'm Pastor Leon Pinkett. In the heart of East Baltimore at the corner of East Fayette and Patterson Park Avenue, New Harvest is a diverse, inner city, multicultural, multiracial ministry that focuses on advancing God's kingdom by equipping each member through sound biblical training, an interactive and supportive fellowship, and our consistent and intentional community and outreach efforts. Known for our loving and family atmosphere, New Harvest is exactly the place for you if you desire a fervent, vibrant worship experience for all ages in a compassionate and loving environment. On behalf of Bishop Marcus Aaron Johnson Sr., Evangelist Rone Johnson, and the entire New Harvest family, we invite you to worship, study, or visit with us at New Harvest Ministry. God bless you. I am so grateful that on this day, Bless Baltimore Prayer Motorcade, July the 30th, 2022. Our last Bless Baltimore Motorcade was in 2018. And since then, the pandemic so much has happened. But today, we were able to send out a clarion call and to get well over 200 people through buses and vans and cars to come together from various churches throughout the city and counties and be a part of the Blessed Baltimore Prayer Motorcade. We met with the support of our Baltimore Police Commissioner, Commissioner Harrison. We met at the War Memorial Plaza, left from there, went to a Jewish synagogue, and they came outside and they brought their tradition to us that we could then support them in trusting and believing God in their service. Then we prayed for Baltimore and then left from there, went to Lexington Park, where so much carnage, so much death, so much crime, and we had a service in the park and it was a powerful endeavor. Participation, the former Colonel Russell spoke and edified the name of God. Then we left from there, we went into, into Hollins Ferry Road, that would be South Baltimore, and lift up the name of Jesus with Pastor Tony Draper and her congregation, and the power of God fell there. Then we left from there, and then we went to Lexington, I'm sorry, Light and Conway Street, where the most recent murder took place with one of the squeegee kids. And we were able to meet a squeegee kid, 15 years old, pray for him, encourage him, put money in his hand, and tell him that the God loves him and the church loves him. And he thanked us. Then we left from there, went to North Avenue, where double murder took place this morning. And we had service outside, right on North Avenue, between the courthouse full of people's despair and March Funeral Home, where dead people are taken. And we stood in the middle, the church, anchored to declare that Jesus is the answer. We prayed over the city, and then we prayed for our police commissioner. Then we left there and came to New Harvest, my home church. New Harvest on East Fayette and Patterson Park. And we stood in the yard and we glorified God on a Saturday afternoon. And right while we were doing it, a man was about to overdose right in front of the church. And because we were there, we were able to minister to him, pray for him. And that man that was about to cross over was revived and brought back to life again. All of that because somebody dared to bless Baltimore. And so we'll be doing it again on next year. I believe now that the church recognizes this is on our watch. And so it's not gonna happen by just the police. It's not gonna happen by just Johns Hopkins. No, it's gonna be the church being in the center of the community and leading the way. And where there is death, God will bring life in Jesus' name. Yeah. Subscribe to New Harvest Ministry and smash that like button and smash the notification bell so you won't miss another video. With the administration, we see you standing on this beautiful 
lot that's been renovated beside the church. There's a lot of stuff that's going to be happening here at New Harvest that Bishop is asking that everyone come and see what's going on. So it's been a few years ago um, now that um, the Lord blessed us with this space. It used to be a, a, a vacant building, but um, we had the resources to get it demolished and then to clear the space. Um, but it wasn't until recently we really were able to have a vision for what this space could look like and how it could be really used for ministry. Yeah, we had Pentecost Sunday with um, one of our partnering churches and they had it in the courtyard and it was decorated very beautiful outside. And we've had this space for several years and it's overgrown weeds and it wasn't really level. And so, you know, after speaking with you and Bishop, uh, you allowed me to work with the ministry to get this space cultivated, get the ground leveled out, put new sod down. And now it's a space that we can use for ministry, for outdoor services, concerts, and different things like that, just to, uh, for the betterment of the community and the ministry. I mean, it's amazing. All of the different departments within the ministry are already now starting to plan, you know, how we can use the space um, because it's really designed to be a part of our outreach where we can take all of the great things that are happening inside New Harvest Ministries and take them to the outside so that our community, our neighborhood can join in and be a part of it. So um, we're just excited about what God, I mean, you can see how beautiful it is. We're excited about what God has done um, and trust us, we're going to be good stewards of this space um, and let the community see what God is doing inside New Harvest but to see it on the outside. Uh, come out and see what the Lord has done. Uh, he's done some great things here at New Harvest. We want you, you've been a part of it, we want you to continue to be a part of it. So join us on Sunday as we celebrate really uh, the transformation that's happening here at New Harvest as we look at our new space, we look at the renovated spaces, um, and then we want to get feedback from you on how God can uh, move our ministry into this next season. And so come one, come all, Sunday here at New Harvest to see what great things that God, God has done for us. God bless you. See you on Sunday. See you. Action! Subscribe to New Harvest Ministry and smash that like button and smash the notification bell so you won't miss another video.
This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. While the seasons change, our desire and passion to worship our God never changes, for He's the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. I'm Assistant Pastor Leon Pinkett, and I welcome you to worship with the New Harvest family on our virtual campus on behalf of Bishop Marcus Aaron Johnson Sr. and the entire New Harvest family. We welcome you to join into this worship experience. Whether you're on your laptop, your tablet, your phone, or any other device, we ask you to just lean in and join with us as we worship our eternal God. We pray that you'll be blessed through this worship experience and find richer, deeper walk with our God. God bless you. That, that wasn't just an, that was an invitation. Can we praise the Lord together? The psalmist in the 70, 78th division of the Psalms declares this. It says, give ear, O my people, to my law. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old which we have heard and known, and our fathers have told us. We will not hide them from their children, showing to the generation to come the praises of the Lord and his strength and his wonderful works that he has done. For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children that the generation to come might know them, even the children which should be born. Who should arise and declare them to their children that they might set their hope in God? And so the question this morning, whether you're worshiping here in the sanctuary with us or virtually, or wherever you may be um, at this present time, lifting up the praises unto God, the question is who should arise? and declare who this morning is going to arise and declare to the next generation who our God is who will arise maybe you're not getting this this morning once again this is an invitation to not be seated where we are spiritually but to rise up and declare the goodness of the Lord to rise up and declare that he is awesome to rise up and declare that he is mighty to rise up and declare that he is powerful who should arise you're not getting it this morning you're not getting it this morning who is going to rise this morning rise up in our praise rise up in our worship rise up God has been so mighty to us God has been so good to us. He is an awesome God. He is a mighty God. He is faithful. He's gracious and he's merciful to us. And all he's asking of us is that, that often it is said, not on my watch. Not on our watch that the next generation won't know who God is. Not on our watch will our children not know the God that we serve. But it won't happen unless we rise up. Unless we rise up and they see us worshiping and they see us praising God and they see us lifting up his holy name. Who will rise up and declare our mighty God? Lord, we thank you for this glorious day. Lord, this is a day that you have made. God, and you didn't just suggest that we would worship you. God, you commanded that we might praise you in this day, that we might glorify you in this day, because this is a day that you've ordained from the beginning of time, God. God, you knew that at this very moment we would be assembled, God, heart to heart and breast to breast, brothers and sisters, oh God, united and praise and worship unto you, God. God, you knew what we would bring to this moment, God. God, you knew the burdens that we would have carried through this week. But God, you knew that you would put a place of rejoicing, oh God, right at this moment, God, so that no matter what we may have faced, God, 
no matter what last week or next week may hold for us, God. Oh God, that at this moment, God, we would find praise on our lips, God, that we would have joy in our heart, God. God, that we would lift up your holy name, God, that we would give you glory, give you honor, God, for you are do it. Oh God, we pray for those who are assembled here and those, oh God, who have a desire to be in this house, God. Oh God, but their physical bodies just won't allow it, God. God, we lift up an offering of praise for them, God. Oh God, we pray for families, God. We pray for our, our brothers and sisters, God. God, we pray for the unsaved right now, God. God, we pray for that young man who's standing right at the bus stop outside of this sanctuary, God. Oh God, touch his heart, God. Oh God, abort what he might have done today, God. Oh God, we bless you today. We don't take it, oh God, for granted, God. The moments, oh God, that we can share as brothers and sisters in Christ, God. Oh God, the beauty of this fellowship, God. The love and joy that we're able to share with one another, God. And God, and so in this morning, God, oh God, you don't have to wait for the rocks to cry out for you, God. Oh God, you don't have to wait for the mountains to be moved on your behalf, God. Oh God, there is a praise that is emanating from this place, God. Oh God, that emanates from the earth, God, to the heavens. Oh God, you don't have to wonder if there will be a people who will rise up and declare your goodness, God. Oh God, oh God, as in the words of the poet today, yet we rise, God. Oh God, despite situations and circumstances, God, yet we rise, God. Oh God, despite, oh God, our concerns and anxiety, yet we rise, God. Oh God, and give you glory and give you honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. This morning's scripture will be coming out of 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 16 through 30. And you all can open your Bibles and follow along. I say again, let no man think me a fool, otherwise yet a fool receive me, that I may boast myself a little. That which I speak, I speak it not after the Lord, but as it were foolishly in the confidence of boasting. Seeing that many glory after the flesh, I will glory also. For ye suffer fools gladly, seeing ye yourselves are wise. For ye suffer, if a man bring you into bondage, if a man devour you, if a man take of you, if a man exalt himself, if a man smite you on the face. I speak as concerning reproach, as though we had been weak. Howbeit, were in soever any is bold, I speak foolishly. I am bold also. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more in labor, more abundant in stripes above measure, in prison more frequent, in death off. All of the Jews five times received thy forty stripes, save one. Thrice was I beaten with rods, once was I stoned, thrice I suffered shipwreck, a night and a day I have been in the deep. In journeyings often, in peril of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils by mine own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren. In weariness and painfulness, in watching often, in hunger and thirst, in fasting often, in cold and nakedness. Besides those things that are without, that may cometh upon me daily. 
the care of all the churches. Who is weak? And I am not weak. Who is offended? And I burn not. If I must needs glory, I will glory of the things which concern mine infirmities. Blessed be the Lord for giving us his word and the reading of his word. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Let us bless his holy name. I say again, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Are we thankful to be in God's presence another Sunday, another day? So are we thankful to be in God's presence? And we give God praise. So we sing this hymn, at the cross, at the cross where I first saw the light.
celebrate this morning that we are blessed. Oh my God, we are blessed. Will you celebrate with us? For we are blessed in this city. I just feel good this morning.
Cause all things are possible.
Let's give God the praise that he deserves. The I am. He deserves all the praises of his people. The I am. That will do what he said. We will do it. We will fulfill it. He cannot fail. He will not give up. He will do everything that he said he's going to do. The I am. The I am. enrich the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Please follow me over to thenewharvest.org and click on the giving tab or you can click on the giving button on the page. There's no amount that's too small, no amount too large. Every gift is appreciated. May God continue to bless you. We do thank God for another Sunday that we could come together corporately and give God the praise and bless God because he is God all by himself. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, he is worthy to be praised. We certainly thank God for the privilege of being able to celebrate a few birthdays. Uh, we said on the other Sunday that Pastor Leon turned 55, and then we learned that our own Elder Elston has turned 72. Let's thank God for both of them. They are significant leaders in our house, and we thank God that they labor among us and for God's graciousness to them, and we are grateful. We've been talking about flying being airborne that's been the topic now for the past couple of months i just want to put it in context so that we can then present what god has for us today when we speak of being airborne we are likening unto an actual aircraft taking flight into the atmosphere every aircraft has a point of uh, leaving a point where you board the flight and you take off. And then it has a point of destination, a place to arrive. And so it's very important that we understand that this taking flight is spiritual in nature. That when we pray, we're taking flight. We are literally leaving from one location and we're going to another. Where are we going? We're going to where the one who answers prayers is. We're going to the throne of God. We're going to the mercy seat. We're going where God will bestow upon us what we are in need of. We also discovered that when we worship, when we give God the glory and the praise, we're taking flight. We again are leaving from our surroundings, from our temporal conditions, and we are going where God is 
able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. So literally, when I am in a given situation that is unfavorable, when I'm in a giving situation that is difficult, I literally can be transported from where I am in the temporal to where God is in the eternal. And literally, I can rejoice and I can bless God and I can praise God. Why? Because where God is, there is liberty. Where God is, there is strength. Where God is, there is joy. And that's why we've been talking about this taking flight. Because life happens. We wake up in the morning and we start on our way. And then we get a report. We get news. Or we go to the doctor. We get a report. Or something happens on the job. Or something happens in our relationships. And we can either just sit in it. And we can fade away or we can fly away into the presence of God and let the Lord affirm us let the Lord confirm his promises let the Lord guide and lead us and direct us in the way that he would have us to go no wonder the psalmist could say I will bless the Lord at all times what is he talking about he's talking about taking flight he is saying despite my surroundings and my soul shall make her boast in the Lord and the humble shall hear thereof and be glad to the natural man that sounds crazy that sounds like you're kind of not in touch with reality I remember when the doctor said to my father my mother and my sister and I were present and the doctor said to him we've done all we can do we only give you a couple of weeks and my father never blinked he never even blinked, never flinched. And, and I remember we were sitting there trying to process what he was saying. And the doctor said to dad, did you hear what I just said? Did you hear what I, don't you have anything to say? You have any questions? And he says, I'm not worried about that. I know where I'm going. In other words, he had taken a flight. He had literally taken a glimpse of the glory yet to come. And this is how we have to live our lives. We've got to live our lives as though we're passing through temporarily. We're on a journey right now. But when trouble comes, this is not my home. When hard times come, this is not where I live. This is where I'm passing through. And so we've got to know that. That's right. Go on and bless the Lord. Every now and then you've got to remind yourself that this is temporary turn to your neighbor and say every trouble you have if you are a believer is temporary but our joy but our blessing but our hope is eternal come on and praise God if you believe that if you believe that then you got to practice that that's the way you got to get up in the morning that's the way you got to proceed on your journey we've got to practice the eternal truths of God and they are not confined to our circumstances well last Sunday we talked about flying the red eye the red eye flight the significance of the red eye flight is that I must be willing to fly when it's inconvenient I must be willing to fly when the majority of the individuals will not choose that time I must be willing to, to go through the process that I can get to God when the Shunammite woman son died she laid him on the prophet's bed she closed the door and she took a red eye and she told the driver drive forward and slack not I've got to get to the prophet and that's the way we got to live we've got to live that I've got to get a word from God I've got to get a response from God because my son is a gift from God he's dead but I'm not going to settle for this he's dead but this is not the way it's going to go down and you've got to be and you made up in your mind we've got to be such that we know that if this is not what God has promised 
then I will not settle for this. Listen, I won't settle until it looks like victory. I won't stop until it looks like the promise. I won't throw in the towel until God turns this thing around. Then the group just finished singing, he'll turn it around. And we've got to know that God is able to turn every condition and every situation around. Weeping may endure but for the night, but joy comes in the morning. And so today, I want to continue our thought on being airborne, on flying, with this thought. Built to fly through storms. Built to fly through storms. Now, I don't know about you, but every now and then, when I need to take a flight, it's during a storm. But I need to know that the aircraft has been constructed that it can withstand the storms of life. Does anybody have a witness in the house today that we're built to fly through storms? Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless you because you have orchestrated this whole process. We bless you, God, that you're not suggesting that your plan works. You are proof that it works. And so, God, we're going to hunker down even now as we make the application to fly through every storm we encounter. Come what may, we have been built to fly through storms. And we trust you. We, we stand in confidence knowing that he which hath begun a good work in us have built us to withstand the storms of life. So we thank you for it. We trust you for it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Every now and then we need to be reminded that we were not created just under convenient conditions. But God has already stood at the end. And God looks back at the beginning. And God has tested every process along the way. And therefore, God can make us a promise that many are the afflictions of the righteous. I'm talking about being built for the storm now. But the Lord delivered them out of them all. Looking at Acts chapter 27, verses 22 to 25, and then I'm going to read verse 44. Acts 27, beginning at verse 22. And this is now, those of you who have been following our study with the book of Acts, this is now Paul sailing to go towards Rome and they're encountering some storms and Paul says and now I exhort you to be of good cheer wait a minute stop right there they're in a storm they're in a storm I don't mean no harm Paul why are you pulling out the party hat why are you pulling out the favors we have just about died. Real, real, real quick, I digress. Real quick, I digress. I like to give you little contemporary stories of my life. Once we were driving, this was in the 80s, we were driving back from south during our summer vacation. And uh, it was my wife, myself, the kids, daughter and son. No, my son wasn't born yet. It was my daughter. And then it was my grandmother, mother dear. And we are coming from the storm during Hurricane Elena. Some of you remember Hurricane Elena. And we're driving, and my wife was driving. Normally, I would drive, but she was giving me a break. But the storm was so bad until she couldn't pull over. It was too dangerous because you could barely see. You had to just keep going straight. And my wife was saying, I don't know how long I can keep doing this. And I'm thinking to myself, you don't have a choice. You better keep on doing it until we can get to a safe spot. And so she's driving, and I'm sitting there, sweetheart. I'm sorry, you know I love you dearly. And that dinner you made last night was just fantastic. But she's driving, and I'm praying. And so finally, I think we went at least an hour. And, and, and you know, and under, under those conditions, an hour is like a month, right? And finally, she was able to pull over 
at a rest stop. And we pulled over. And I sat there. And I said, oh, my God, thank you, God. And my grandmother, sitting in the back seat, she said, I just love the ride in the rain. I'm like, what? I said, dear, we almost died. She said, I just love the ride when the rain is falling. Evidently, she had taken a flight. But anyhow, here we go. And now I exhort you to be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you but of the ship. For there stood by me, Paul is saying, this is how I know no one's going to die. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve, saying, fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar. You've got to get to the destination. And lo, God have given thee all them that sail with thee, they're going to survive because they're under your watch. And I'm here to tell you right now, everybody under your watch, oh, they're going to survive because you've got to get to your destination. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God that it shall be even as it was told me. And the rest, this is how we're going to survive, some on boards and some on broken pieces of the ship. And so it came to pass, verse 44, that they escaped all safe to land, built to fly through the storm. Now this was the condition of a ship, but the concept is the same. That God had said, despite the storm, you're going to land safely. There's an old hymn said, land ahead. It's a beautiful land. It's a beautiful shore on Canaan's happy land. Something like that. Don't worry about it. Here we go. Listen. Being spiritually airborne is not restricted for only clear skies and sunny days. Look at your neighbor and say, did you hear that? Uh-huh. To the contrary, to be spiritually airborne or even having to take a red-eye flight during the late night or passing through various time zones, often will encounter various weather patterns and conditions through which the plane must fly. Did you hear that? Once we're in the air, we got to keep going. It's not like we can pause and stop, right? We're going to have to keep on flying. So today, I'd like for us just to look at a few examples that verifies the spiritual airborne flight is built for the storm. When we consider every segment of the plane, when we consider the wings, when we consider the, the fuselage, when we consider the cockpit, when we consider every, the, the, the tail of the plane, the, the, the very point of the front of the plane, all of it has been constructed to withstand the storm. When God saved us, he saved us and sealed us by the Holy Spirit until the day of redemption. No matter what we encounter, no matter who disappoints us, no matter what door shuts in our face, we were saved to make it across the finishing line. And I'm here to tell you right now, you can bless the Lord for whatever you're going to encounter this coming week. Because when God saved you, he looked at the week to come. And God backed into where you are today and said, I have sufficiently prepared you. I have equipped you for such a time as this. We've got to be willing to fly when it's raining, rainstorms. We've got to be willing to fly when there are wind storms. We've got to be willing to fly when there are unforeseen air disturbances. Sometimes they talk about an air pocket. And it's almost like you're hitting an object that the plane literally begins to bump and drop. Because they're different 
pockets of air that we will encounter. Some of those air pockets are criticisms. Some of those air pockets are people who want to bring up our past. Some of those air pockets are those who will give you every reason why it won't work, why it ain't going to make it. And so you encounter all that, and yet God is still saying, fly. He's still saying, take to the skies. You've got a destination to arrive at. So we come to our first point, point number one. Jesus helps his church to always fly through death storms. Thought I'd start at the worst. Did you hear what I just said? Jesus helps his church to always fly through death storms. What are we talking about? Jesus told Peter when he asked Peter, who do you say that I am? And Peter said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Here's the point now. When God asks us a question, our enablement is in the answer. Peter, who do you say I am? You get ready to fly in the storm. But I want to know, who am I to you? And Peter said, thou art the Christ. The son of the living God. If we can acknowledge who God is, we're ready to fly, y'all. Listen. And so Peter said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus told Peter that he was going to now build the church based upon Peter's revelation of who Jesus is. And he says, and I also say unto thee, thou art Peter. And upon this rock, some folk confused it and thought the rock was Peter. No, Peter is a stone. But Jesus said, upon the rock, upon the revelation of who I am, I'm going to build the church. The church is built based upon who God is. That's why I know the plane's going to fly. Because I know who the creator of the plane is. He says, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. What does that mean? The gates of hell is death. And Jesus was saying, I'm getting ready to go to the cross. I'm getting ready to die. But my death is not going to stop the building of the church. Because it was built for the storm. It was built for the crucifixion. It was built for all the judgment that Jesus would encounter. It's built for it. And I want to tell you right now, you may have had some bad knocks last week but I want to tell you if you're in Christ you were built for it I wish I had some witnesses in the house right now any bad news that was brought to you before you heard it you were built for it good God I reckon Lord it makes it it, it gives you a whole different perspective now I can face because he lives I can face tomorrow. Why? Because I was built for it. I was created in Christ Jesus. I was made in him from the foundation of the world. Somebody made a commitment to you and haven't come through yet. You were built for the delay. Good God, I reckon. And the question is not, will it come to pass? The question is, what are you going to do while you're waiting for it to manifest? I'm going to give God the praise. I'm going to be a testimony under God. I'm going to make my boast in him. Jesus knew he was going to the cross to be offered as the sacrifice for sin, requiring his death. He already knew that. And his disciples, he knew they were going to forsake him. And they were going to flee. And he would be buried in the tomb. Jesus knew all of this. And still... I like to call this aircraft Spirit Airline. Good God. Adrian, work with that one here. I'm flying on Spirit Airline. Good God from Zion. Listen, and still Spirit Airline, despite what Jesus was going to go through, it was still built to fly. It was built to fly through the storm. And Jesus knew on the third day that he was going to then 
be raised from the dead. And after 40 days, he was going to ascend to be with the Father. Therefore, Jesus was clear, because he's the head of the church, that he helps the church to always fly through the death storm. If Jesus hadn't gotten up from the grave, then there would be no church to fly. But before he went to the cross, in John 17, Jesus said, Father, what you have called me to do, I have done it. Let me tell you something, that's some deep talk. He had not physically gone to the cross. And yet the Bible declares from the foundation of the world, the lamb was slain. It was already done because Jesus had settled it in his heart. What have you settled in your heart that you're going to come through for God for? What have you made a commitment in your heart? God come hell or high water. My soul says yes. Lord have mercy. Let me keep going. I may need some security to get to my car today because I, I can tell some folks don't like this. I'm parked across the street. I'll just need, I need a brother and or a sister. These days a sister can be good escort. Get me safely to my car. I won't speak to nobody. I'll mind my business. But I'm built to fly. Good God. Look at somebody and say, are you built? Stop right there. Pause. And then say, to fly. Wait a minute. Say, through any storm. Come on and give God the praise, somebody. Come on. Lord, have mercy. Point number two. Point number two. The Holy Spirit helps the church to always fly through storms of infirmity. Good God, I tell you. Let me tell you something. When my, when we're at my, bro, my brother's father-in-law's funeral. And I was leading the choir and declaring. I don't know what we sang, but all I know, we were going in. We were going in strong, right? I did not know that Monday night that the next night I would be laying in the hospital. I was directing the choir. Come on, let's, let's, let's do this thing. Let's do it. But the song says, we have an anchor that keeps the soul is steadfast and sure while the billows roll. Think of his friend, I can stand and say what I need to stand. Say, no matter what holds in tomorrow. Because the Holy Spirit helps the church to fly through storms of infirmity. How do you know that, Bishop? Well, Paul told us in Romans 8, 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But we can still fly, y'all. We can. I, I may not even know all the words that I need to say in the prayer. But I can still fly. Listen. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us. That's why I can fly. Because the Spirit is praying for me. Through me. With groanings which cannot be uttered. He that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the spirit because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Here I'm saying, God, please spare me this. And the Lord is saying, no, I'm not going to spare you that, but I'm going to give you what you need to get through it. And so I'm praying one thing and the Holy Spirit is praying something else. And who do you think God is listening to? He hears the prayers of the Holy Spirit. Somebody wave your hand and say, pray, Jesus. Listen, it helps. Holy Spirit helps us to fly through infirmity. Yeah. Sickness hits your body. The Holy Spirit can help you fly through that infirmity. Your condition you've been trying to keep it under control and all of a sudden the lid flies off the spirit will help us to fly through the storms of infirmity it could be your own it could be somebody else's that you are supporting them through but whatever the case may be I want you to prepare right now to take flight I want you to be able to pray I have a very close dear friend who's going through a procedure and I'm here to tell you every morning I say okay God 
Help them to fly through this. They know who I'm talking about. Help them to fly through it because the spirit helps our infirmities. So the winds of sickness may blow. We can still fly. Good God from Zion. Lord have mercy. You know, we don't, the world doesn't need a bunch of believers who, who fall apart when sickness comes. That's when somebody needs to stand up and say, by his stripes, we are healed of every disease. He was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised. Come on, somebody, for our iniquity. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his what? Come on, church. With his what? We are what? Oh, I know half believers don't even believe it. That's why I, I named a new term, believing believers. Because we have some unbelieving believers. They're born again, but they don't believe God's word. Uh-uh. As soon as a pain hits, it's like that. I can't remember that cartoon when I was a little boy. It was some, some man on there, no matter what happened, said, Oh, we're going to be destroyed. We're going to die. Who was that, David? You remember. He always had something negative to say. And I'm going to tell you something. When I get in a prayer meeting, I don't need nobody negative to come there. Don't, they say, join hands with your neighbor. Oh, let's make sure you're not a negative, unbelieving believer. Because you'll pour water on every fire. I need somebody to say, let's keep on going. I need somebody to say, I am determined. Come hell or high water, we're going to take this flight. Prayer as the aircraft is empowered by the Holy Spirit to withstand every crosswind from earth to glory. There ain't a demon. Michael Williams, you beat those drums. But I want to tell you right now, when you're beating those drums, you're not just beating them for the present song. You're prophetically beating them for the march that we're about to take. I need you to know that. And every beat matters. Every beat, it counts. Come on, somebody. And we've got to have it settled in us that I can withstand every crosswind. No matter which way, if the plane's got to tilt to this side, so be it, Sister Avis, then we'll tilt. But we're going to still fly. We're going to still fly. Despite the weather, the church can always fly the prayer craft when you're flying with Spirit Airline. Listen, all right, all right. night or day, Lord have mercy. I'm almost finished. You're going to get off good today. Listen to this. Point number three. But if the spirit hit me, I may lose track of the time. Pray, church. Pray. <laughs> oh, my God. Listen. Point number three. Point number three. The word of God helps the church to fly through battled skies. Because if I'm going to take flight, but yet the enemy is shooting weapons. I've got to be able to fly through battle skies when something negative is coming, a missile to try to, don't you know every time we pray or worship, the demons send a missile to knock it down? Because the last thing the enemy wants is that prayer to get to the glory, to get to the throne. Last thing the prayer that the, the enemy wants is for our praise to reach the throne of God. So the enemy will send missiles. Here's a missile. He's an accuser of the brethren. And if he can cause me to get locked up in shame and locked up in guilt, here's another missile. I'm going to tell you a missile that hits a lot of believers. Doubt. If I can doubt the promises of God, then I can abort the flight. I can counsel the flight by my doubt. Here's another missile. Fear. Could God get locked up with fear? And all of a sudden I think I can't make it. I can't do it. Uh, but I'm a, but when, you, when you fly Spirit Airline, you're not subject to the natural things. They can't hit at you that can take you down. When I was at Johns Hopkins and, and the Lord said to me, it's time to walk. I want you to know every missile was flying trying to knock out my confidence, knock out my faith, knock out my security. Listen, knock out my communication system with God 
But I had to determine that when I don't have nothing else, I'll hold on to the promise. I'll hold. God said it's time to walk. Then if I don't have nothing else, I'm going to hold on to that. Because he's not a man that he should lie. Nor the son of man that he should repent. Listen, listen. And so the word of God helps the church to fly through the storms of battled skies. And when the weapons are coming... This is what Isaiah said. Isaiah 54, 11. He says, I'll tell you how to fly through a battle sky. No weapon. I said, no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. Hit the person next to you. Not in the face. Just hit them on the arm somewhere. One preacher said one time, slap the person next to you. You better not. You, Lord Jesus, help us. Because I'll be a witness. I saw you slap him. Listen. Touch the person next to you and say, no weapon that's formed against you will stop you from flying. I want you to stop right there and give God the praise. Come on. Come on, church. Come on, believers. Come on, spirit-filled believers. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. That means the missile will be launched. But it won't stop the flight. And every tongue that shall rise up against thee in judgment, you shall condemn it. In God's courtroom, you'll be able to stand up and say, Lord, that's a lie. It's a lie because your word declares. And then go ahead and speak what the word of God doth declare. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. This is just a benefit package that we have, y'all. And their righteousness is of, is of me, saith the Lord. Here's another missile. Daniel had to deal with this missile. He was trying to take flight. Daniel chapter 10. Listen to this. Daniel had prayed and fasted for 21 days. He was only doing what the Lord told him to do. And ain't nothing happened. Anybody ever been in a season where it looked like one nothing happening? Oh, only one person in the whole house. I don't believe. We're going to pray right now for forgiveness of lying. I said, has anybody ever been through a season where it looked like nothing was happening? After you prayed, after you worshiped, after you quoted, thus saith the Lord, and then it was just dead silence. I, I, I got a good witness. Look, I'm going to preach right at you. Here, it's you and me. Come on, let's fly. Let's fly. Come on. Now she's going to want an offering. Help us, Lord. Listen. Here we go. Here we go. Listen. Listen. Finally, the angel came. Gabriel showed up. Daniel 10, verse 12. Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day Thou didst set thine heart to understand. Did you hear me? The Lord said, I heard you when you cried the first time. God said, I was moved. He says, and you chasing yourself before God. He says, thy words were heard. And now Gabriel says, and I am come for thy words. I'm come for your flight. I'm coming for your prayer. I'm coming because of what you were calling out to God. He said, but this is what took so long. This is an answer to somebody in here right now. You've been saying, what's taking so long? I'm going to tell you what the problem is. The prince of the kingdom of Persia is blocking your blessing. Your blessing has left the throne of God because God has dispatched it. But there is a demon that's in the airway. And he's standing between you and the blessing. But God says, I'll handle it. Good God. Lord said, don't worry. I got it. He says, but the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days. But lo, Michael, he's the warring angel, y'all. One of the chief princes came to help me. You are sitting there saying, God, you're not even hearing me. And the Lord is saying, there is a war going on over your head on your behalf. I'm fighting for your victory. I'm fighting for your deliverance. I'm 
fighting for your breakthrough. And if you would stop complaining and listen in the spirit, you would hear that your angel is winning. Somebody say hallelujah to God. I don't think I'm going to be able to finish this message. I don't think I'm going to be able to finish it today. First of all, I'm sweating. Number two, I'm tired. One thing to be tired. I'm not tired. I'm tired. I'm tired right now. But if God's people could grab this thing, if you only knew right now up above your head, there's music in the air. There's a celebration going on. There is dancing and there is singing. I said concerning your victory. And here you're sitting there saying, nobody knows. Shut up. You're off key and you're out of beat with what heaven is doing on your behalf. Could I get just two believers for 10 seconds to praise God? Just praise him. Just bless him. Music over my head. Somebody said it ain't going to happen. The Lord said it already happened. I've already dispatched your blessing. I've already sent it. Your name is on it. There's nothing hell can manufacture that can stop you from flying. Let me finish this. Let me finish this. And I'm going to go. Fly through, she said. Lord, have mercy. <laughs> Number four. Number four. I love our little media team. They're all under 25, and they all can fly. Look at them. Look at them. Put them hands down and touch those controls. <laughs> he the main one be looking for a button. Listen. Listen. Number four. Number four. Praise and worship helps the church to always fly through and beyond the stormy earth into the heavenly gathering. Now, I'm not going to dwell on this one long. Because when you come on up, brother David, I'm not going to dwell on this one too long. But listen to this. Listen to this. The Hebrew writer tells us that when a spirit-filled, blood-washed, blood-bought, somebody that knows God by his name, Somebody that frequents his throne room. When we praise and worship, it's different. Some folk just go through the motions. But I'm talking about somebody that God knows the sound of your cry. Because you belong to him. That God follows you. Why? Because you always carry your praise. And we have this treasure in earthen vessels. And so God can monitor us on his radar. He always knows where this praise is. He always knows where this worshiper is. God always knows where he can get a real hallelujah. God always knows where he can get a glory to God. He has tracked you from hell to the mountaintop. And this is what happens when we worship. Deacon Craig, touch your wife. Just touch her shoulder and say he's talking directly to us. All right, now turn around back to me. Okay, come on. Y'all can finish talking at home. Listen, listen. But this is what the Hebrew writer said. But ye are coming to Mount Zion, unto the city of the living God. Who am I talking to this morning? God is saying, sitting in your kitchen, your body is sitting in the seat but your spirit has come to Mount Zion unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels. And you think you're the only one praising God? You are compassed about with a great cloud of witnesses and they're glorifying God. And they're telling God how holy he is to the general assembly in the church of the firstborn. That's where my dad is right now. That's where Minister Beverly is right now, Deacon James. That's where all the saints, they're gathered around the throne. And when we start worshiping God, we hook up with Minister Beverly. We hook up with Deacon James. We hook up with Deacon Monomos Johnson. We hook up with Paul. We hook up with Peter. Come on, somebody. A general assembly and church of the firstborn which are written in heaven and here's the one 
and to God the judge of all. Jesus said, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. And the spirit of just men made perfect. And to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant. So, when the doctor told me that you won't make it through the night, I took a flight. I went to Mount Zion. I went to the city of the living God. Somebody praise God for somebody who doesn't have sense to praise him. I went to the heavenly Jerusalem. I went to the innumerable company of angels. I ain't praising him by myself. I ain't praising him in no corner. I want you to know that this assembly is large to the general assembly and the church of the firstborn. That means Jesus church because he's the first to raise from the dead and never die again. And to the judge of all and the spirit. I hear you minister Beverly singing all is well. <laughs> We're going through all this storm and minister Beverly is saying where I worship all is well. Did you hear what I said? Whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, we are built to fly through every storm. Nothing can stop my worship. Nothing can stop my praise. Nothing can stop my prayer life. Nothing can stop me from grabbing the word of God. And I want to declare that every impossible thing, everything that the odds are totally against it, I hear God saying, and my God will supply all. Somebody say all. Uh-uh, uh-uh. No, you don't believe that, do you? Because you've already made exceptions over here. And my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. I want somebody to know right now, you are built to fly through every storm. Lift your hands before God. Father, in the name of Jesus, here we are, Lord. We're on the runway and it's storming. The rain is falling hard. The winds are blowing. The hail is descending. The snow is storming down. And they're saying no flights can go out. But I hear you saying, God, but you were built for this storm. You were built for the hurricane. You were built for the tornado. I will show you how to fly through it. I will show you how to fly over it. I'll show you how to fly around it. But you must get to Caesar. You've got to get to Rome. And there's only one way to get there, and that's to fly. Father, I want to thank you that not one soul will be lost that flies Spirit Airline in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody tell God thank you. Come on, tell him thank you for that wayward son, wayward daughter, wayward granddaughter. Somebody tell God thank you for your finances out of control. Come on, tell him you're built to fly. Somebody tell him thank you for your health condition that you're afraid to go to the doctor about. You're built to fly. Somebody tell God thank you for the anointing of God on your life, for your ministry, that you don't have a clue how to make the next step. You're built to fly. And somebody's dealing with a relationship issue, somebody that's hurting, and the only way you go to sleep is to cry. I hear God saying, you were built for this. Fly. Take flight. Come on, hit the skies. Come on, go higher. Come on, take to the skies. I hear God saying, stand the storm. It won't be long. We're going to anchor. We're going to anchor. Weeping may endure, but for a night. Lord, this word is for hope today. This word is for hope today. God said if it's broke, I can fix it. 
God said, if you lost it, I can find it. I don't care what it is. If you're weak, I'll make you strong. Does anybody here that needs to accept Jesus Christ? The number's on the screen. The address is on the screen. You let us know and we'll tell you how to fly. You start by accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Inviting him into your life. Confessing that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That I believe Jesus Christ died for my sins. That he was buried to take them away. And that God raised him from the dead on the third day. That I could walk in the newness of life. You can do that right now, sitting right there in your kitchen, in your living room, in your car, on your job, or in this sanctuary. Or if there's anybody here and you lost a loved one and you're trying to get it up again, you're trying to be re-motivated again, God is saying you are built for this storm. I would have never sent it if I hadn't equipped you for it. You were equipped before the storm came. You didn't know it, but while you were sleeping last night, the Holy Spirit came in your bedroom and anointed you from head to toe. He anointed your ears for what you would hear. He anointed your eyes for what you would see. He anointed your fingers for what you would feel. God says, you have been built for this storm. So whenever I face a disappointment now, whenever I'm confronted with something, that shakes me whenever I have when I have to deal with something that I don't want to deal with it I have to remember I was built for this I was built for 2,400 pounds of sheetrock to fall on me the Lord didn't have to show up and all of a sudden make me ready I was ready before I went to work that day I just didn't know it but I'm here to tell you before the incident happens God is I'm really done I'm done I said God is I don't even believe I could fall over a cliff and God hasn't already met with angels and they already know and they're standing there to catch me lest I dash my foot against the stone what am I trying to say if the plane crashes you're going to survive. I want you to praise God right now for your survival. Come on, church. Come on. That's how we're going to close this thing out. I want you to praise God for your survival. Your children. Your children's children. Your children's children's children. From as many as the Lord thy God shall call. Is there anybody here? I, I don't feel today that I'm supposed to lay hands unless there's a special need I don't think that's my job today this is what I see in the spirit and then we're out of here I see saints walking around this sanctuary saying I'm built for this storm I will fly if you feel that urge in your spirit just take a walk come on come on just take a walk take a walk good God and have it in your mind. Just take a walk. That's right. That's right, sir. That's right. Just take a walk. I'm built for this storm. I'm built for it. I'm built for it. I'm built for this storm. If the plane crashes, there shall be no loss of life. There shall be no loss of life. Hallelujah. Somebody needs to say hallelujah. Somebody needs to say glory to God. I'm built for this flight. We bless God for this opportunity to share and commune with one another. The word of God reminds us that um, as often as we come together, we should do this. Because of the fellowship, because of Communion is a way of looking in that rear view mirror as a reminder that he is still on the throne. The word of God says it that, and when the hour was come, he sat down and the 12 apostles with him. 
And he said unto them, With desire I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say unto, oops, for I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. And he took the bread and he gave thanks and he broke it and he gave unto them saying, This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. And likewise also the cup after supper saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this time of communion, God. We pray that this bread and this wine, these elements, God, oh God, would be transformed from their earthly use, God, to a spiritual one, God, as we join in you with communion, God. Oh God, we thank you and we in remembrance of the great sacrifice that you paid for us. Oh God, your shed blood and your broken body. Oh God, that you gave Oh, God, for our redemption that you gave, that we would be in right standing with God. Oh, God, we bless you for such a gift. Oh, God, that we were truly unworthy of and it's such a price that you paid for our redemption. Lord, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for the depths of your love. Oh, God, as brothers and sisters in Christ. Oh, God, we remember your love for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If we would pull back that first layer. As we lift it over our head, the, the body of Jesus Christ, the broken body of Jesus Christ that was broken for us, let us eat the broken body of Jesus Christ. And on that same evening, if we would pull back the foil, as Bishop would say, to expose the blood, the blood of Jesus that covers us, the, the blood of Jesus that has never, ever lost its power, the blood that was shed for our righteousness, for our redemption, for the remission of our sins. Let us drink the shed blood of Jesus Christ. And for those who are not able to be with us today, I'm, I take communion on their behalf. Can we bless God for his broken body and shed blood? I'm not certain if there are any announcements. We ask that you um, continue to keep Bishop and First Lady in prayer as they um, had an opportunity to get a much needed rest and relaxation. So we pray God's blessings over him and them as they are away. Um, and just continue to be mindful of um, the um, those who are tuning into the um, midday that still will be going on um, as scheduled. So you can still tune in at one for the midday and then on Wednesday nights, even for our Bible study. And so um, if we could stand to be dismissed.
Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for um, another opportunity to be in your presence. Lord, we don't take it for granted, oh God, that you would even allow for us to be assembled in this place. Lord, with everything that's happening um, in our world, nation, and even our home city, God, um, we are thankful, oh God, that we can call this a joyous, joyous gathering in you. Oh God, that we would come together to worship and to lift your name, to rejoice. Oh God, to call you holy, God, to give you glory and to give you honor. And Lord, though we may leave this physical place, God, we dare not leave your presence, and God. And so, oh God, as we return to the things that may concern us, God, we leave knowing that we will not lose hope, God. We will not be discouraged, disappointed, or defeated because you remain on the throne. God, you remain the Elohim God, the creator of all that we have. God, you are still in first position in our lives. And so everything that we face has to line up according to you. Everything that we face has to remain subject to your authority. So God, we thank you for who you are, and we thank you for your faithfulness. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Beloved, we thank you for joining us today um, during this worship experience. We pray that what you've heard today, what you've felt today has been a blessing to you and your family. Um, if God has inspired you today, continue to be a part of this virtual experience on this YouTube channel. You can subscribe, you can like, but we pray that you are blessed as a result of our worship, that you are encouraged as a result of the teaching, and that you're inspired by the preached word of God. God bless you and be blessed.